Hey, in this video we're going to take a look at the word lockdown. Originally I used the word etymology, but I'm beginning to think I should perhaps just call it the historical usage of the word lockdown. The word lockdown is of a North American origin. In and around the early 1800s, they used the word lockdown to refer to placing timbers securely together so that the raft or the timbers could float successfully downstream. So they would put notches in the timbers so the timbers would hold together as they traveled downstream on the river or the stream. By 1832 in writing the word lockdown is used to refer to placing timbers together so they could successfully float downstream and in that usage it was hyphenated. Now in the early 70s that term lockdown became associated with prisons so that by the year 1975 the word lockdown could be used to prisons referring to keeping every prisoner in their cell due to an emergency situation within the prison. In the early 80s the word lockdown got transferred into the usage of nuclear power plants whereby there was something going on with the nuclear waste or nuclear energy that required the plant to be under lockdown. Now you should know that nuclear power plants are a hoax. The purpose of this video is not to explore that, but you should know that. In 1999, the big school shooting Columbine occurred. Now you should know that school shootings are hoaxes. When they use the word shooting, it's in place of saying filming. A shooting is a filming. So by the year 2000 and into the uh, 21st century, Lockdown became associated with schools, that the children and youth that were in schools underwent a lockdown if there was some type of threat to the school. And we heard school is on a lockdown. Now with the outbreak of you know what, that term lockdown got transferred to the elderly, to nursing homes, and in addition to nursing homes, assisted living homes, and also to uh, hospitals. So it now acquired a medical usage. Today, the word lockdown can now refer to towns, cities, countries, you name it. So we went from in the 1800s just simply talking about timbers on rafts floating to prisons, to nuclear power plants, to schools, to medical facilities like nursing homes, assisted living homes, and hospitals. And now it is actually applied to towns, cities, and yes, even countries. This is all draconian. We can understand it in the 1800s and possibly in the 1970s with prisons, but as the usage, the historical usage of the term progresses, it eventually comes to mean something that's draconian it comes to mean something that's oppressive. It comes to mean something that all your freedoms 
are canceled and you are in a situation of lockdown which essentially means there's nothing coming and there's nothing going so for example just this week I heard of an individual who usually comes to a certain event within our community that oh she cannot come because that particular assisted living home is under lockdown so now the one the administrators who run nursing homes and uh, assisted living homes are now equivalent to the warden or wardens of prisons not allowing anybody in and not allowing anybody out in a similar fashion schools hence became prisons so it's now used in a sense of oh we're so concerned that we need to lock down the nursing home or lock down the assisted living home. We're so concerned we're going to lock down that entire town or that entire city or that entire country. So they become essentially what? Which was the second historical development prisons. It's just another term now for a prison. Whenever you hear the word lockdown, it simply means that that place where those individuals dwell is now a prison. And yes, that is true of nursing homes and assisted living homes. And yes, it is even now becoming true for towns, cities, counties, and countries. So go to the one who set us free the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. When you know the truth that the Lord Jesus gives to us, you can be free of this world and free of all of its impositions upon us, like Pharaoh imposed upon the Israelites in Egypt. You can be free because Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. As he quoted Isaiah chapter 61 in his very first sermon that he would set the prisoners free. We're free in Christ, but maybe in this world these particular lockdowns do affect us in some way or another. But in Jesus Christ, we're free of the power of this world and the power of sin and the power of death. Be free in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus does not lock you down. With Jesus, there's no lockdown. With Jesus... We are set free. Thank you for watching.